I mentioned yesterday that today we'd do a video all about powdery mildew and also darning mildew which are two different things. Sometimes people mistake them for being the same thing but they're not. There is a significant difference between the two and one of those differences is that powdery mildew is a fungus which obviously will spread from leaf to leaf, plant to plant whereas downy mildew is more of a parasite it's not a true fungus at all it's a parasite that needs to live on your plant for its entire life cycle so it's a constant drain to that plant and that's why when you spot downy mildew on plants quite often it can be too late to do anything about it you can cut away leaves you can treat the leaves that are left I hope you've kept it in check but from what I know once you get an outbreak a downy mildew it's usually at the end of that plant because apart from being a massive drain on that plant it's going to slow down growth it's going to slow down fruit production so it's just a constant battle from beginning to the end whereas powdering mildew is a fungus and it's a fungus that can live on leaves of your plants it can live in soil and then spread to leaves of your plants and there is a very easy way to tell the difference between the two if you've got downy mildew you'll have little white patches underneath your leaves and they can be white to a purpley colour but that's how it starts it's always underneath the leaf and it eats its way through to the surface of that leaf and then the top of that leaf starts producing yellow patches and that's how you know it's downy mildew and not powdery and those little patches will get bigger and bigger until they cover the entire leaf and then that leaf has basically died off and that's how it eventually kills your plant because it will just keep spreading from one to another because it's a parasite and it needs a host but when you get powdery mildew you will see on the tops of your leaves that there's all these white patches so it looks like a powdery residue on the surface of your leaves but once again those patches of white will spread and spread until they cover the entire leaf and what that does is it stops photosynthesis of that leaf so that leaf very slowly will die back but unlike downy mildew you can treat it but before we get into that I've always said that prevention is better than the cure and there is ways to prevent both of those diseases and strangely enough it's something we've been doing since right at the beginning of the year with all this tomato plants and that's making sure that everything has got really good airflow because these diseases thrive on humidity so if your plants have got lots and lots of foliage at the bottom that's a perfect breeding ground for it and that's why we always trim the bottoms of these tomato plants if you've not seen what we do with our tomato plants I'll just very quickly show you so these are our tomato plants and you can see how much foliage we've removed from the bottoms of these plants because that guarantees us good airflow And as we go up, we're also slightly trimming back some of the other foliage as well. Because we want plenty of airflow, we also want plenty of light getting to all these tomatoes so they ripen a lot quicker. That's basically how you need to treat your plants. Just over here we've got quite a big butternut squash plant. And you can see how dense the leaves get. There's nothing wrong with these plants at the moment. As you can see, the leaves underneath are perfectly fine. It's a place that you need to be looking for the start of this disease. A lot at time, especially with downy mildew, by the time you see it on top, it's spread too far. But this is a perfect example of what you shouldn't be doing. And I've left this purposely. The bottom of this plant has got lots of foliage and a lot of it is decaying and it's sat on ground and that's going to cause problems with mildew so all these bottom leaves you need to be clearing them right at the very bottom of this plant all these leaves you should be cutting those away we've also got vines 
that are coming off this plant on the bottom and they're trying to work their way under the bench. We don't need those vines, we've got plenty of top growth. So I'll remove these extra vines. Right back to the main stem, that's where this vine's starting. So I'll take that off and then we can take away that entire vine that's gradually working its way under that bench. And we can keep the bottom of this plant a lot tidier like that. And because this plant's so tall already, I'm going to take that leaf away as well. Just give it a really good tidy up. We don't want any of this growing out bottom. It's just going to cause problems. Now you can see that is a lot cleaner under there and that's exactly how we want it. So that's one thing that you can do that's going to be a massive help to you. Just keeping the bottoms of them plants nice and clear, ensuring they've got really good airflow will massively reduce the chances of you getting any kind of mildew. And apart from pruning your plants, you need to make sure when you plant them, don't plant them somewhere where there's a lot of shade. Because if plants aren't getting enough sunshine, once again, they're more susceptible to mildew because they're in a humid, damp environment. That's just a couple of ways that you can help prevent it happening in the first place. But of course, at some point during the season, you're going to come across your plants that have got it. And it seems to affect some plants a lot more than it does others. Your squash plants with the big leaves, your courgettes, your cucumbers, melon plants. I seem to find it on those more often than on anything else but you can also get it on your tomatoes as well so if you've got something like that growing in here next to tomatoes or cucumber plants it's very important that you keep your eye on those plants because what starts off on one plant can quite easily spread to the others and then you've got a bigger problem so we just keep everything nice and clear underneath for that reason but when you do get to a point where you have noticed it there is ways that you can treat your plants Slightly different once again between two. When it's downy mildew, it's a much more aggressive disease. So you're better off treating that with a copper-based fungicide, if you can get hold of one. Other than that, you can use neem oil. And I'm not saying they're going to be 100% effective on downy mildew. These are the two things that are going to be most effective. If you catch it early enough, that is. Also, when you do this, you're going to cut your leaves off. And when you cut your leaves off, don't put them in your compost. Put them in a bin. If you put them in your compost, that disease will come back the year after. Because what it does is it lives over winter in that compost as mycelium. And you won't know, but the following year, when you go to use some of your compost, that disease is already there. And you'll be adding it to your plants before you even get started. So bin all those leaves. You can also try a mixture of bicarbonate of soda, vegetable oil and horticultural salt. But that's not going to be quite as effective as neem oil or a copper based fungicide when it comes to downy mildew. I find that 9 times out of 10, if I do get anything like that, it's always powdery mildew. And because powdery mildew is not as aggressive as downy mildew, you can treat that. You can keep on top on it and your plant won't die. And you're going to notice it more often than not on the bottom leaves of your plant. That's where it'll start because those leaves are close to that compost and it's a bit damper in that area. But what you'll see on your leaves is these little white powdery patches. And as soon as you see that, that's when you need to start treating it because they're just going to spread. You're going to get bigger and bigger and then concentrate on the leaves above because there's a good chance that it's already on there, it's just not showing, and that's the perfect time to catch it. And you can make treatments for this using household items, which we'll get round to quite shortly. Thank you very much to Carol Hobbs, who's made a donation to the channel. You know that every donation that we receive is massively appreciated, and the money is put back into this channel, so we can carry on making these videos on a daily basis. So thank you very much for that, Carol. It's really generous of you. Once again, neem oil is probably one of the best things out there that you can get to treat powdery mildew. I don't think they sell it in the UK. I've never seen it. 
but I do know that you can get it off Amazon. And that is basically a case of diluting it as per the instructions and then spraying the leaves of your plants. And you need to spray them top and underneath as well. And then repeat that process a few days later. And that is a really effective way of controlling powdery mildew. But when you're spraying any type of chemical on your plants, it's a really good idea to avoid the flowers as much as possible. Because that's where your pollinators are going to be. There is certain insects that feed on the leaves of your plants, obviously. Things like aphids and spider mites. Them type of things we don't really care about because all they do is cause devastation to your plants anyway. So if it gets rid of a few of them in the process, so be it. But stay away from the flowers because your bees, your pollinators, that's the area they're going to be in and we don't want to be poisoning bees while trying to save as plants. And another thing that you can do is once you've cleared all the bottoms of those plants at the beginning of the season ideally mulch all the way around them. Still mulch now if you're having problems with powdery mildew. That's going to help keep that fungus in soil if it's present but at the same time it is going to retain moisture for your plant and help you with consistent watering at the same time. So it's always a good idea to mulch around your plants. And if you've noticed our Italian plum tomatoes in the other greenhouse, we're using old grass clippings that we put around the bottoms of those plants for that exact reason. And they're looking a lot better than they were at the beginning of the year. So now you know what to look for. Downy mildew is white patches under your leaves, yellow patches on top, powdery mildew, is a powdery residue on the tops of your leaves. You can identify which problem you've got and then you can treat it accordingly. And if you don't want to buy neem oil, I have got a couple of homemade ones that you can try. And each one's effective in its own way. But the good thing about it is, you've probably already got most of this in your kitchen cupboards. So it's not a problem and it's at no expense to try and make some up. So we'll go through a couple of those and these are mainly for treating powdery mildew. And the first thing that I've got on that list is milk. And you mix the milk with water. And the way you need to mix that is four parts milk to six parts water. And then you spray all your leaves underneath and on top with this milk mixture. And what that's going to do is when it interacts with sunlight, the milk releases what's known as free radicals. And they basically kill the fungus. It's a really effective way to get control of something just as it begins. I'm not sure how effective that will be if it spreads over the old plant. But a lot of time, because it's a white residue on your leaves, you see that quite early. So you could try that milk mixture and give all your leaves a spray with that. And just repeat that process every eight days. And eventually you should see those leaves improve. But more importantly, it's going to get rid of the problem on that leaf and stop it spreading to any more. Another one that you can use, which might sound a little strange, is mouthwash. Mouthwash kills all the bacteria in your mouth. So once again, we can use a mixture of that diluted with water to help get rid of this powdery mildew. With the mouthwash, you need to mix one part mouthwash with three parts water. And once again, when you apply that mouthwash mixture, you need to spray on top of your leaves and underneath those leaves. And then monitor it over a few days and then reapply as needed. A simpler mixture you could make up is just by using vinegar. And in that case, you'd need three tablespoons of vinegar to a gallon of water. And then again, spray top and underneath and repeat that process as required. And then we've got another one. This one actually works for soft-bodied insects as well, like aphids. So you can have a mixture of this made up at the beginning of the year and use it for both purposes, whether it be to get rid of those little annoying pests or treat powdery mildew. And the first part of that recipe is baking soda. Not to be mixed up with baking powder. That's a different thing. So it's going to be called baking soda or bicarbonate of soda. And that's what you need. And you're going to need three tablespoons of that. And you'll add that to one gallon of water. To that you need to add three tablespoons of vegetable oil and the vegetable oil is effective in the way that it's going to help this mixture stick to your leaves for longer so it's going to have a greater effect but obviously because it's oil based you definitely don't want to be spraying that on your plants if you've got any warm weather 
because oil is going to eat up and then it's going to cause damage to your plants. So again, this is one that you're better off doing early in the morning before that sun gets to what, if we ever get any sun this year. Last ingredients for this mixture is going to be some kind of a soap. Now you can use dish soap, which is your cheapest option, but if you want to be more garden friendly, you'd be better off using horticultural soap. The only difference is horticultural soap you can buy off eBay, but it is quite a bit more expensive than washing up liquid. But when you imagine you make these ingredients up, you're just using a couple of spoons full, usually to a gallon of water. So one bottle is probably gonna last you a couple of years. So it might be worth the investment and know that you're doing it the cleanest way possible. And you only need to add a few drops of this soap to your mixture that's all it'll take maybe half a teaspoon since we know that we've been getting quite a lot of humid weather that is key for setting off this problem but if you clear all the bottoms of those plants like we originally mentioned there's a very good chance you won't get that problem to start with i hope this video is useful to people and cleared up a few things that they might not have been too sure about and maybe now, Edwina, you can have a closer look at your plants and you'll know exactly what problem you've got, if one at all. But if there is a problem there, at least now you've got a few options to help you treat those plants and then ensure yourself a bit of an harvest by end of season. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this as we go through season, please hit that subscribe button, press that notifications bell, and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you very much for watching and enjoy your weekend. Thank you.